Hey, Brian White is filling in for Buck Lavasser. When we think of hunting ducks and geese, we think of fall. But for those who have hunting dogs, it's a year-round endeavor. While back, we took a look at what happens in the off-season. Now we'll take a look at the next phase of training and find out what happens in the preseason. This time around, we're going to do a little bit more advanced stuff. We're going to actually shoot the guns. Then it's time for another Only in the UP segment. Exquisite dining with the greatest decor I've ever seen in any restaurant anywhere. The great UP Outdoors. Everything is homemade from scratch. You'll just have to come out and see what I've got and taste it. Sit back and put your feet up. It's Monday night and time for discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Hate to see summer pass by, but most hunters would probably admit that deep down inside they can't wait for the leaves to turn, the air to cool down, and the smell of fall to fill the north woods air. Don't get me wrong, summer is still here and that's just fine by me. We're still wearing shorts and cooking on the grill, but while we're doing it, we're secretly thinking hunting. With the early goose season right around the corner and duck season less than a month away, for the hunting dog owner, it's time to up the training to the next level. Last time that, that we were here, a few weeks ago, a month ago, we did some beginning things for retrievers, getting them ready for the tune-up for the hunting season. Now, this time around, we're gonna do a little bit more advanced stuff, working out of coffin blinds, making sure that if you have two different dogs that are together, that they are steady to shot, which could be crazy here because we have a two-year-old and a eight or nine-month-old. Get them used to each other, to the decoy setup, and then we're gonna actually shoot, shoot the guns that's a lot more advanced than what we were doing before because we didn't shoot the guns. And if your dog breaks when you shoot the gun, you could have problems. You could shoot your dog, uh, a lot of crazy things. You can go for a ride in the coffin blind. My five-year-old last year took me for a ride in the coffin blind, uh, pulled me with the, the rope. I went about 10, 15 yards. So you want to make sure that they're steady. That's what we're going to work on, just singles right now. Hey, stay, uh, Mark, Mark, and stay. 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 Kennel. Elsa. Safe. We're, we're working on a couple different skill sets. Uh, one being the honoring. Uh, one dog gets sent out. We're shooting the gun off. One dog gets sent out. The other one has to stay, which that can be crazy. And when you hunt with people and both dogs run out, a fight might break out, especially with two big male chessies or whatever male you got there. You want that kind of respect level for each dog. Also, you don't want to shoot your dog if the gun goes off. So this is our practice and you, and you have to do it in real life situations. We have live fire here, so we only can shoot in certain directions. You know, when you're duck hunting and goose hunting, you ain't gonna be down in far when they come in. Then when the, when the birds come up and you say, take them, you fly up and you're gonna shoot. A lot of times these dogs just bolt because there's all this excitement. They're pretty laid back right now, but you get real geese in, it can be chaotic, and I don't care anybody says been in it for a long time. All right, we hit, we're going number two. Hey, this one's going for your dog. Stay, stay, stay. Chopper! Stay. Good girl, bring it here, bring it here. All right, good girl. Hey, hey, hey. Got a ring in it, we got more geese coming in. Good girl. Out. Good girl, get in the kennel. 
chopper kennel. All right, that wasn't too bad. You can see chopper, she's bringing the bird back slow and that's just her attitude she's throwing at me the last couple weeks, but she's young and we'll get it down. This is my four-year-old son. He's going to run Elsa, his, uh, as he calls her, his hunting dog. Uh, she's 10 months old and he's four. He's going to, we're just going to run two singles for her and him. Uh, he likes to train the dogs and makes him feel like he's involved. So I'll go out there, throw the dummies, and he'll show you how it's done. Ready? Dad, put the other one that way. Okay, you want a double? What do you do, Cam? Okay, get control of your dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good job, Cam. We're gonna work on something a little bit more advanced. Hopefully he won't screw this thing up. Stay a shot. The single's gonna go out. I don't know which single. He's gonna kind of play games with me. As he's coming back, we're gonna pretend there's two birds that were shot. I'm gonna take the one bird and I'm gonna send him back. He has no idea where those birds went and I have to do hand signals which uh, then we can kind of explain a little bit later, how do you get a dog to do blinds, which sometimes takes a long time. This is stuff people don't think about doing, shooting from this, and it's really easy just to train standing up like we did last time. You have to train like you hunt, that way you lessen the possibility of chaos. Stay. Sky. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Bird's coming, bird's coming, come on, buddy. Supposed to drop the bird, but so what? Come on, come on, come on. Get the bird. Come on, come on. Here, 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 here. I killed two birds with one shot. Well, I've got two blinds set up. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna work on here, just shot two birds. He didn't see them. And now he's got to trust me with this blind retrieve business with all this stimuli with the launchers and that. But we're going to work on this and see. you got to be able to handle right here in your blind. Back! Zerk! Now i got to get up. Over! Good boy! You want to go towards that white bucket. Oh! Back! Pull that whistle when they're coming away from you. They turn around and they, then you get the hand direction. Over! And that's an amazing thing to get a dog to do that. Now I'm going to try something. Set! You blow the whistle once, they're looking at you. Maybe a goose is flying in from the other hand and you can get that angle shot bringing a goose in. That's why you might want to do that. And he's juiced. What we're going to do is, uh, I guess it's a prerequisite to what Rick did with his blinds. It's a handling drill. You know, when he blew the whistle, the dog stopped, turned around, or turned around, stopped, looked at him, and he gave him, you know, overs or backs, angle backs. This is the beginning drill to start building that foundation to get to that point. Uh, we call it baseball. Uh, basically, the dog will sit at what would be the pitcher's mound, handlers at home plate, you throw dummies to first, second, and third base, and then you just give them, you know, hand signals of which ones you want them to go to. Mark, usually start by throwing them only to one base. Throw one to first base first. Mark. Then you throw one to third base. Then you throw one to second base, which is actually the hardest going back. It's harder than going left or right Mark. for whatever reason. We started about a week ago doing handling drills, so she's been doing all dummies out at one time. Okay. Over. Good girl, here, here. We'll expand that out, we'll throw dummies where they were, and then we'll have dummies 10 yards beyond that on each point. Pretty soon, we'll have them 50, 60, 70 yards apart. We'll just keep expanding baseball out farther and farther. Over. So when you're out on Lake Michigan hunting, you have a flyer that goes off and dies 100 yards away, you can hand your dog to it. It's just a progressive thing. You start baby steps and you keep expanding it, making it bigger, adding guns, adding more birds. 
I'm going to walk towards her when I give her the back signal to try to force her back a little more because that she's still having trouble with going back. It's not her first choice. Back! Good girl. Good girl. Okay, we're just going to try to do an extension of what he was working on with blinds. Earlier this morning, I ran pattern blinds. That means that every single time that that you put a blind out there, they see it. So I'd throw, I'd put a bumper 10 feet away, 10 feet away, 10 feet away where she can see it and cut grass. And she builds the confidence that when I say the word B-A-C-K, that it's to go straight back from me, stay. And I had one out the farthest somewhere in that area earlier this morning. I'm gonna see if she remembers it. She may get confused by the other marks that came in, but I'm gonna try to work her to this and she's just been introduced in the last month or two to blinds and she's been fighting me so dead bird back back sit over holy cow you got it that's exciting good girl and you gotta use a lot of praise. Good girl, hey! She's got her tail wagging, she's got her ears pinned back. That means she's still not trusting me. And then you give them love. And a lot of times people will uh, treat their dogs like robots. And if you treat a chest like a robot, they are gonna shut you down. They won't do anything for you. Chopper! Now you can see how fast she runs. That's when she's not controlled. So she's just holding out on me but very happy with that one. And it'll just build, the confidence will build and she'll get cockier and cockier. And Good girl. Oh, you're a good girl. We're gonna we're gonna do a, a quick water scenario. We don't have shotguns, can't have that out there. I don't have the decoys, but we're gonna be in a situation where we have land, then water, then land, then water, then land. And we're just gonna do some basic marks off of that. Oftentimes when you duck hunt, you're gonna get these kind of scenarios, so that's what we're working on with all the different dogs that we have here today. Chopper! All right now, she just, she, she had a pretty good mark on this. What you don't want is the dog to run the bank and all the way around because it, they'll not be able to mark properly. They'll lose the mark, so that's why we try to get them to go straight. And pretty good. Come on, here! Good girl, good girl. Stay, stay. Chopper. If we had more time, we'd go farther back into the deadheads. Um, but that's good enough. And you know, oftentimes you'll shoot a duck that does that and they have to have some experience. Good girl, here, here. This is the second kind of stage of training for preseason. We're just working on um, a scenario where a duck would fly up over the top of, um, you know, past that island or right up to that island. And you want to make sure that dog gets the mark, gets there as quickly as possible in a straight line is usually the case. Come on. And bring it back as quickly as possible. Um, oftentimes dogs, if they're not trained, will not go sit, will not go land water, land water. They may take that point, go all the way where Kevin is or all the way around and then pick up that mark. And that's not what you're really looking at because then they can miss the mark and it take longer to do that instead of just going straight line. And you, you wanna get that dog back and that bird back and you know, wherever you're at so you can shoot more of them. Go off the same concept, but now the dog doesn't know that the bird shot. And oftentimes you'll get this you can see the white dummy, but there's another one thrown for the older dog. Um, you'll get this in a duck hunting scenario where they've got to go through that to get the duck. It might be a wounded duck. Once again, why do we want to get the ducks? Why do we got the dogs? So that we get every single thing that we shoot gets brought to the bag. You don't want wounded ducks. People find the wounded ducks. They're mad about at the hunters. So it's important, an important skill to teach them to do the land, water, land, water, land. Back and we'll try to get this knocked out. Here, he's messed up already. 
Sit. Zach. No. Sit. Zach. See, he wanted to run that, that, that land right there, and it gets him all screwed up, and he finally took the cast. But he can see that thing. The next one's way deep in there, and I'll run uh, Dutch on that quick. This is Dutch. He's my nine-year-old, and had a lot of fun times with him at hunt tests and hunting. Dead bird. Back. I don't use him a whole lot anymore because he busted up his toe several years ago and has never been the same. Sit. Look. Zach. I can run him on water, so that's what I'm going to try to do this hunting season. He knows there's a bird out there. Good boy. Come here. Come here. Well, you need to do, as soon as she gets that, you're blowing on that whistle. Elsa, Elsa. Okay? He knows. He's got it all figured out. What do you tell her? Sit. Stay. Mike. Look at she's working hard. And then when she picks up that dummy, you gotta blow on that thing. Get on it. Get on that whistle. Get out! I'll take it! I'll say it. Get her to heal. Heal, heal, heal. Sit. Heal, heal. Heal. Sit. Sit out. Do it. Mommy. It's time for Only in the UP, the segment of the show that highlights the friendly, creative, crafty, and inventive spirit of those of us who live here. It's about that stuff that makes the UP the greatest place on earth to live. A few miles east of the North Dickinson School on M69, you'll find Princeton Garden Outdoor Dining. If you're going to go out to eat, you might as well eat outdoors. Now this is my kind of UP dining. Well, actually, the beginnings of my Princeton Garden started when I was very young. Um, this is where I used to play. We bought our parents' home in 1977. I love flowers and ponds, and so then I just decided to dig. We dug up a little pond, which is very small. These are just little puddles, but they have waterfalls, which is very enchanting. And I have flowers from many, many people. I decided to ask friends and family for flowers, and so then they gave me flowers. And then when I see those flowers, I think of them. Then I decided to put a, a restaurant out here for outdoor dining, and I have my own entrees, and I have a special every day. And Everything is homemade from scratch. I have a variety of soups. The wild mushroom is the favorite. They just love it. And I have my own specialty coffees. And, and I have my homemade bread. Also, um, we have a, a large variety of wraps and salads. Oh, we have beautiful salads. And then uh, we feature Candy's Cheesecakes. She's outstanding. They're beautiful. And when we present them, we have oohs and ahs about all the food. People take their cameras out and take pictures all the time, which just amazes me. A lot of people think that this is just for women, and it isn't because I always have something hearty for men. I always have a sandwich that they would appreciate. Italian turkey, porchettas, and beef marsalas, and they're all on a nice hefty bun. So they're satisfied when they leave. And then, of course, I have homemade pies. And we serve a flan that is absolutely fabulous. It's uh, a recipe from a friend of Jack Gard's on the Amazon River. People request it and they're very disappointed if I don't have it. And also what is so wonderful is that I have a, a chef that cooks traditional Chinese cuisine. He is absolutely fabulous. Uh, everyone that tries his, his different entrees love it. And I will truly entice people, implore people to have his food because he's that good. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Many people say that they do and they want to come back, bring their friends, and it's just fun. On the beautiful days, of course, the dining is outdoors, but if it's too cold or if it's raining, I'm more than happy to uh, have you go into the tea room. I'd be very happy to serve you there, and I'm sure you'll be very comfortable. I've got several places, little hidden places, where I've got a little chair and table or setting for two if they want to have a romantic evening or I'll even serve on in the gazebo if someone has a special 
event like maybe an engagement or maybe an anniversary I've done that and they really really enjoy it because they've got just a, a quiet place all by themselves and I have a guest register at the front of the garden and it's just absolutely fabulous because I've had 13 different countries that have visited the garden and over 23 different states and so I get to visit uh, with all of these wonderful people and they're so interesting and normally in the spring I open it as early as I can depending on the weather but it's normally around Memorial Day and then I close the last Saturday before Labor Day. Uh, however, this year I am very excited because I am going to start in-house breakfast in my tea room. I'll have a full menu for breakfast. Follow me on Facebook. You will know what my menu is for the day or my special. And then you'll also find out when I will be opening in-house breakfast. And I will be doing groups by reservation only through the winter months and then the breakfast on Saturdays. No reservation needed for, for the breakfast. We have two gazebos that people do outdoor weddings and you could also call me and I'll be very happy to um, tell you all about it. My days are Wednesdays and Thursdays um, from 11 to 4 and Fridays and Saturdays 11 to 8. Jack Gard, the, the traditional Chinese cook, works Fridays and Saturdays only. We are right off M69 and then you would take Harder's Road right into the garden. It's very easy to find. My favorite part of this whole thing is meeting people. I have been busy enough where I haven't been able to get out to greet my guests and that is so disappointing for me. I love to visit with them, find out who they are, where they're from, and of course they always have questions, but this is just absolutely, I think the most wonderful job I've ever had because I get to meet so many people. And then when they come from other states and other countries and and then even the local people that I get to actually visit with them because normally you don't you don't have that opportunity to sit and visit with them when I'm not too busy <laughs> so that is my best the best part well that's it for this week we'll get back together with Rick and Kevin again in a month or so for the hunt and if you get the chance stop by and visit Emmy Lou at the Princeton Garden you won't be disappointed Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.